Improvements The driving force to further develop LTE towards LTE Advanced, LTE Release 10 is to completely fulfill the requirements as set by ITU for IMT Advanced or 4G. In LTE Advanced, focus is on higher capacity. Increased peak data rate, downlink 3 gigabits per second, and uplink 1.5 gigabits per second. Higher spectral efficiency, from a maximum of 16 bits per second per hertz in release 8, to 30 bits per second per hertz in release 10. More subscribers can be active at the same time. Improved performance at cell edges. In the following, some of the new and enhanced functions in LTE Advanced will be presented. Carrier Aggregation The most straightforward way to increase capacity is to add more bandwidth, and this is indeed done in LTE Advanced. Since it is important to keep backward compatibility with Release 8 and Release 9 mobiles, the aggregation is based on Release 8, Release 9 compatible bandwidths. Carrier aggregation can be used for both FDD and TDD. The example shown here is FDD. Each aggregated carrier is referred to as a component carrier. The component carrier can have a bandwidth of 1.4, 3, 5, 10, 15, or 20 megahertz, and a maximum of five component carriers can be aggregated. The number of aggregated carriers can be different downlink and uplink. However, the number of uplink component carriers is never more than the number of downlink component carriers. The individual component carriers can also be of different bandwidths. The easiest way to arrange aggregation would be to use contiguous component carriers within the same operating frequency band, as defined for LTE. This type of aggregation is called intraband contiguous. This solution might not always be possible due to frequency allocation scenarios. For non-contiguous allocation, it could either be intraband, meaning that the component carriers belong to the same operating frequency band, but have a gap or gaps in between, or it could be interband, in which case the component carriers belong to different operating frequency bands. When carrier aggregation is used, there are a number of serving cells, one for each component carrier. The coverage of the serving cells may differ, both due to component carrier frequencies, but also from power planning, useful for heterogeneous networks. The RRC connection is handled by one cell, the primary cell, served by the primary component carrier, downlink and uplink PCC. The other component carriers are all referred to as secondary component carrier, downlink and uplink SCC, serving the secondary cells. Different component carriers can be planned to provide different coverage, that is, different cell size and or directions. In the case of interband carrier aggregation, the component carriers will experience different path loss, since path loss increases with increasing frequency. In this example, carrier aggregation on all three component carriers can only be used for the black UE. The white UE is not within the coverage area of the red component carrier. Introduction of carrier aggregation influences mainly MOC and the physical layer protocol. But some new RRC messages are also introduced in order to add, remove, or modify secondary component carriers. 
in order to improve system capacity in terms of number of active users, cell coverage, and bit rates, various multi-antenna techniques can be used. TX diversity benefits from using two or more uncorrelated TX antennas in combination with advanced receivers combining the two or more received signals. This solution makes the signal more robust and thereby improves cell coverage. MIMO, multiple input, multiple output, or spatial multiplexing, is used to increase the overall bit rate through transmission of two or more data streams on two or more different antennas, using the same resources in both frequency and time, separated only through use of different reference signals to be received by two or more antennas. There will be one or two transport blocks transmitted per TTI. Note that for TX diversity, the same set of data is transmitted from all antennas. For MIMO, different sets of data is transmitted from all antennas. TX is best used to increase signal to noise in low SN scenarios, for example, for UEs at cell edge. MIMO shall be used for high SN cases, that is, when the radio channel is of high quality. To be able to adjust the type of multi-antenna technique to use according to, for example, radio environment, a number of different transmission modes, TM, has been defined. The UE will, through RRC signaling, be informed about the TM to use. In the DL, there are nine different TM, where TM1 through 7 were introduced in Release 8, TM8 was introduced in Release 9, and TM9 in Release 10. In the uplink, there are TM1 and TM2, where TM1 is the default, and it was introduced in Release 8, and TM2 was introduced in Release 10. The different TM differ in number of layers, streams or rank, antenna ports used, type of reference signal, cell-specific reference, CRS, or demodulation reference signal, introduced in release 10, pre-coding type. Through introduction of TM9, 8 times 8 MIMO is supported in the downlink, and through introduction of TM2, the use of 4 times 4 MIMO uplink was enabled. Reference signals are used for demodulation as well as for channel quality estimation, CSI, channel state information. A major change in release 10 is introduction of new types of reference signals. Here we will only present the change required for MIMO. In release 8, the cell specific reference signal, common reference symbol CRS, is used for both demodulation and CSI measurements in the downlink. The amount of resources, resource elements, blocked for reference signal increase dramatically with increasing number of antennas. Hence, the relative amount of radio resources available for user data decreases with increasing number of antennas. Hence, inefficient use of radio resources. Note that this is the case even if it is only one UE is using MIMO. In release 10, a UE specific reference signal called Demodulation Reference Signal DMRS is introduced. It will be used for demodulation for release 10 capable UEs. Release 8 UEs will still use the release 8 CRS. The UE-specific DMRS will only be transmitted within the resource blocks aimed for the UE using MIMO. Hence, if only one UE use MIMO, only the physical resource blocks aimed for that UE will carry the DMRS for that specific UE. 
In multi-antenna techniques, pre-coding is used to map the modulation symbols onto the different antennas. The type of pre-coding will depend on multi-antenna technique as well as on number of layers and number of antenna ports. The aim with the pre-coding is to achieve best possible data reception at the receiver. Note that the signal will be influenced by fading of various types, which can also be seen as some type of coding caused by the radio channel. In release 8, the reference signal is added to the signal after pre-coding, one CRS per antenna. From the received CRS, the UE will estimate how the radio channel influenced the signal. Using this, together with knowledge about the codebook-based pre-coding used, the UE will demodulate the received signal and regenerate the information sent. In release 10, the DMRSs are added to the different data streams before pre-coding. Knowledge about the reference signal will provide information about the combined influence of radio channel and pre-coding. No pre-knowledge about the pre-coder is required by the receiver. This case is referred to as non-codebook-based pre-coding. Relay nodes. In LTE Advanced, the possibility for heterogeneous network planning, that is, a mix of large and small cells, is increased by, for example, introduction of relay nodes. The relay nodes are low power base stations that provide enhanced coverage and capacity at cell edges, and it can also be used to connect remote areas without fiber connection. The relay node is connected to the donor E node B via a radio interface, UN, which is a modification of the E UTRAN air interface, UU. Hence, in the donor cell, the radio resources are shared between UEs served directly by the donor E node B and the relay nodes. For type 1A RN, the UU and UN use different frequencies. For type 1, RN, UU, and UN utilize the same frequencies. In the latter case, there is a high risk for self-interference in the relay node when receiving on UU and transmitting on UN at the same time or vice versa. This can be avoided through time sharing between UU and UN or having different locations of the transmitter and receiver. The relay node will, to a large extent, support the same functions as the E-node B. However, the donor E-node B will be responsible for MME selection. <laughs>